What is up everybody? Hope you guys have been well. Today we are back and we are working on the Land Cruiser once again. We are at our beautiful location here at Tiny Rig where we build some awesome vehicles. Let me show you guys around. We have this matte black Prospector. We have this beautiful Jeep Gladiator. We have another, I believe it's an F-250 with a 5010. But pretty much this is where you'll see me or find me Monday through Thursday and we built some awesome stuff but today we're gonna to be working on the Toyota Land Cruiser. I'm gonna be installing the all brand new goose gear system as you can see here. A while back if you've been watching the channel I removed the seats. I did my little camping setup but it's about time we get organized and we install the goose gear system with the drawer system the sleeping quarters, which I've been dying to install. I'm so glad it's finally here and today we're gonna install it. So let's get this all prepped. We're gonna remove the rug and get it installed. I'm so excited guys. All right, so all you need is a Phillips screwdriver. We're gonna go ahead and remove these screws. And this is by any means not a full detailed insulation video. I'm just gonna try to cover as much as I can. Uh, the neat thing about Goose Gear is for the most part, everything is bolted to the factory location. So you're not gonna be drilling or modifying anything. Uh, so yeah, that's why Goose Gear is the way to go, guys. So this little guy should just come off just like that. All right, so now that we have that chrome piece removed, we will have the seatbelt for that seat in the back. We're gonna remove that as well. Now in my case, I am not gonna be reusing the seatbelt. So right behind this cover here, you will find the seatbelt uh, mechanism here. So I'm gonna take this off. I'm also going to pull this little tab here, remove the top portion of the seatbelt. That way I can totally just delete the system or the seatbelt from the Land Cruiser. So we have the hardware off on both sides. We're gonna start by removing the rug. Basically just peel it off. Might be a little dirty down here. Stinky. It's all right. Just gonna this out. So now that we have the rug off, we're gonna take the hardware that secures the seats in place and we're gonna vacuum the whole thing and put the base plate in.
So now to install the goose gear plate, it's pretty straightforward. You just have to angle it just a bit and kind of just slide it into place. Once you do, it should just sit right on top. Now what you want to make sure is you want to just position it to where you can see the factory locations in place. That way we can use the existing hardware to secure the base plate in place. Earlier I said we're going to use the existing hardware while we're not. Which is just all this. It says hardware enclosed. Packaged by no name. It was probably Hayden. So if you're watching this, thank you. But here we have it. Brand new hardware. And uh, if we go and look at the old hardware, it's pretty pretty obvious of what goes where. So the tie down points have smaller hardware, which means these little guys will go there, here, and then the bigger hardware, which is somewhere else, will be this guy. Just like now to be safe, I love to use heavy duty anti-seize when I'm using, you know, aftermarket hardware or just installing anything that's aftermarket on my vehicle is just because the last thing you want is for you to put the hardware in in a factory location and have that thing seized so we are going to be using factory factory heavy duty anti-seize on every bolt that goes into this install and you don't need a lot just a little bit little dab of it will go a long way we're going to apply that to every bolt that was provided and we're going to secure that factory. Why do I keep saying factory? We're going to secure the bed plate in place. Factory. Sorry, Brian. So we're going to put all the hardware in place and we're not going to fully tighten everything just yet until we know that everything is aligned. Once we know everything's aligned, then we can Go ahead and secure it and bolt it down. So basically this is the driver's side high uh, delete. We're gonna basically install this here just like so. And this already has hardware. Um, it's got these little T-nuts or these little sliding or these sliding, uh, I don't know what this is called. Correct me in the comments if you want. Uh, so we're going to slide this through the extrusion um, just like so all the way through and uh, it comes with a total of three. We're going to put all three, we're going to align it and we're going to install this side panel. right up top so just make sure that you're aligned here
And once you align it, all you really have to do is slide this down, grab your bolt, and secure it. Now we're not gonna go Hulk Hogan on it. We're just gonna make sure it's placed, make sure it's aligned with the rest of them. Once it's secured, then we can go ahead and oh no, oh. then we can go ahead and uh, do the rest. So what I noticed and really helped was just the shape of the modules here. As you can see here, we have two openings for possibly a bracket. So I figured this little guy here would allow me to add that bracket. So one thing that you do want to know about this sliding hardware is that you want to make sure that this little indentation here, if you guys can see it, make sure that it's facing out when you're sliding it through the extrusion. If you face it in, what's going to happen, it's not going to catch with this opening and it's going to move around. It's going to be very difficult to install it. So. You always want to make sure that it's facing out. That way it makes it easier to install. And you can use your hardware to slide it through. That way we can put our panel right up top, just like so, and align it. All right, so now that we have our module all together, we're gonna grab this bracket here and we're gonna place it underneath, just like so. I'm assuming this will connect both modules, driver's side and passenger side together. <laughs> I'm smiling because I am just guessing here, but I am pretty sure that's what they're for. Here we have it. We have half of it in. Now we just gotta build the other side and put the rest inside. All right. Woo! Hours later, this thing is looking good. And boy, oh boy, did I forget to take this off. Ah. Now that we have both of the modules in place, if you remember, there is a bracket here that was installed on the driver's side portion of it. So that bracket is basically gonna be connecting both modules together. So we're gonna grab our hardware and just secure them in place. Now they're not gonna move around and now they are linked together. Alright, so it's in. Now we gotta secure it in place. We're gonna open this drawer. You should have these little this little hinges here on the side. Just lift up. This whole drawer just come off like that. Uh, you will have a bracket that looks like this. And this bracket is what's gonna secure the front portion of the delete system to the drawer. Now, you will have two holes right here, and this bracket here will go underneath, just like this, 
And if you see the drawer system, it's got an extrusion here that will basically be connected with this side of the bracket. Just like this. This side will be right under. And these guys will be right on the extrusion. So you will have these little guys right here. And all we have to do is slide them in. And just like that. Now we can move them around and line them up with the bracket to secure both the drawer system and the rear seat delete. Alright, so now that we have the brackets uh, installed, now we can move them around, align it with these two holes, and secure the drawer system to the rear seat. I'm pretty stoked to almost be done with this project. It's been a couple hours. So now that we secured the drawer system to the rear seat delete. Now we're gonna grab our hardware for the drawer system. You're gonna have hardware that looks like this. And uh, pretty much all we're gonna be doing is locating a bracket that looks like this that has been pre-installed inside the drawer system. Unfortunately, due to the light, it's gonna be hard for me to show you guys, but it's a bracket just like this. It's gonna be pre-assembled. Uh, you will have to loosen it up so you can slide it through the extrusion. And then all we're gonna do is grab the hardware provided that looks like this, and we're gonna use that hardware to secure it to the base plate. Everything has been pre-drilled. All we're gonna be doing, just an example, is adding the hardware and securing the drawer system with these brackets to the base plate. Oh yeah. Now very similar to the drawer system, now we can actually see the brackets that I was talking about earlier. We are going to be loosening these up, we're going to move them around, that way we can align them with the base plate, which you can probably see the factory holes here, and that's basically going to secure the kitchen portion down to the base plate. Right now we do have this fully extended and if it wasn't for the brackets that secure it to the base plate, this is what you would have. So, Gooskar did a very good job. All right, so we have both the drawer and the kitchen fridge slide uh, installed. I did want to make sure that this was flush because now we have to install 
this small little cubby that goes right behind the fridge and the rear seat delete. Uh, very similar to the fridge and the uh, drawer system. Same brackets, just like this one. And same hardware to secure it to the base plate. So we are going to be using the remaining brackets to secure the bracket just the way we did this side. Once we do that, we're going to open this up and secure this module to the base plate. So here we have the last piece of the puzzle guys, uh, pretty much on the side of the extrusion here you will have these latches for the other piece of the latch that will secure this in place, pretty much giving you another small area to store a few things. So after a few hours of wrenching this is now pretty much all done. Uh, we do have the drawer that's going to allow me to keep everything organized at camp. We have a designated area for both the cooking top and the fridge, just like that. And best of all, we also have a ton of room where the seats uh, were before. So we have storage now, we have a, a flat surface to sleep on, and uh, I'm looking forward to taking this out on the trails. Uh, like I said, I didn't see any PDFs or instructions on how to build this so I figured a video would help those of you guys that are interested so anyways all that to say I want to thank you guys so much for watching if you guys are interested in some goose gear products I'll be linking tiny rigs information so you guys can go on there check it out order yours and feel free to visit us here at tiny rig we'll be more than happy to install it for you guys as always I will catch you guys in the next video peace